There's no like esports business guide. Like the only way you learn is by making mistakes and staying in business long enough to survive them and not repeat them. And there are fatal mistakes that some people make and you have to learn from those mistakes that other people made so that you don't make them. Because it's so easy to trip on yourself and then you're dead, just like that. And it's a nameless grave. No one will ever remember that you were here. You gotta stay solvent and relevant all at the same time. And it's a lot more work than you think. It's not a part-time job. There's, no part, there's nothing part-time about this. You're not gonna like go to work every day and then do this in the evening. Like it's gonna constantly like haunt you, if that makes sense. You know, what's going on with the team? What's going on with the players? What's going on with the media? What happened in this? What's on Reddit? Da 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 da. You know, it's it's so easy to get consumed by that. Um, but at the same time, though, I feel like the space is growing up slowly. I feel like this vision that we all have of seeing something that's truly sustainable and viable and beneficial to everybody involved is slowly going to come to reality. And I think it's all about staying the course and it's all about proving value to all the different parties involved, not just the, the fans and the sponsors, but the players, the tournament organizers, the other teams. And a lot of it's about working together. As much as it's tempting to all be viciously competitive right now, like there has to be some recognition for the fact that there's like one or two teams out of like 10 global teams that are like really making money. I think the fans need to take some ownership in that too. You know, they need to realize that, you know, this thing that I love, this enjoyment that I'm getting from this, this entertainment value, costs a lot of money to produce. And it costs a lot of money to train these players. And it costs a lot of money to, to manage these logistics challenges and to have Justin from Star Nation interviewing people every event. Like somebody's got to pay for that. And I don't know that we've totally come to that realization yet. I don't know that we're there yet. But I mean, I feel like we're closer now than we've ever been before. And for me, the recognition of the fact that, you know, like I'm not, you know, Captain Kirk and this is not the Enterprise and I'm not like, you know, in charge of this whole thing. Like I'm not, I'm not the pimp daddy, the, the freaking, you know, the, the godfather of esports. Like it's not going to happen. Like people get in this whole thing because they like want to like, oh, this is a land grab. I can just come in here and take over and just, you know, run the table. Like, yeah, right, bro. The table's going to run you. You know, you got to realize, you got to put your ego away and realize that this is something that you're getting into to give more than you're going to get for a long time. And I think my only, my hope is that the people like, you know, even, I mean, people talk about EG all the time, like that they're like rolling in cash. But I mean, honestly, they're just like a marketing company that gives all of their profits back to esports instead of taking it home every year. So, I mean, from my perspective, I want to see the people from, from those organizations that have put that kind of time and dedication into this, even when it was hopeless, even when there was artificial growth being driven by other people who failed us. I want to see all those people be able to recoup on their investments and be able to live their dream of actually doing this as a job and enjoying it on a daily basis and seeing this grow as a, as a vi viable, you know, realistic and professional endeavor.